Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Run Melon Nostalgic Runner. And whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, my stand. There we go. And we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of New York. And this is season. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get that together. Season 15, episode three, and this is called Drama Mean Drama. And okay let me be completely transparent um i'm gonna give new york two more episodes um because this episode was not good it was not good i'm really trying to give this a chance but honestly it's kind of reminding me about why i don't like the real housewives of dubai it just seems very um I don't know like it just seems very um <sighs> I'm trying to be nice about it I'm still trying to give it a chance I don't want to stop people from watching the show but I just did not enjoy watching this I'll be honest like I I was bored I was extremely bored and it also kind of gave me a headache because the arguments are not good like they're they're it's like the arguments are very petty and stupid and really annoying like they're not even fun petty it's just it's it's stupid and Bren gets on my nerves I I don't I don't like Bren <laughs> like at all I'm sure like I thought I I don't like her I don't like her and the problem is most of the drama is surrounded is based off of Bren and the other it, it's just I don't know it's just oh my god and also too the, the person I found the most interesting this episode was a friend of. And she really didn't have much to say. But she was the most interesting person out of everyone. Like Raquel, I'm trying to give her a chance because she's new. But I think she has an interesting life. But she as an individual just seems kind of boring. I mean, I hate to say it. I'm like, I'm, I was bored watching this episode. And even when it comes to her story, her story is an interesting story. But like... You know how someone can have an interesting story and a lot to them, but because their personality is just kind of like bland, it doesn't matter. That's kind of how I feel, at least how it translates on TV. It's very, it just isn't it. And it, I think what's hurting New York is you have three other housewife shows that are performing way better. And you have Salt Lake City that's literally killing it. And then you have OC that's killing it. And even Potomac, the episode that I just got done reviewing, I was pleasantly surprised. I was not ready for Potomac to follow, like to go full speed ahead. Because normally Potomac has a slow start. And this last episode was, it was good to me. It was very, very good. So I think Potomac, I think they turned around Potomac. Um, and maybe I'm speaking too soon on that because it's only been two episodes. But the fact in two episodes, I feel better about Potomac than how I feel about New York. And it's been three episodes. And New York, you know, has the advantage of the other cast member that is New York City. I would expect better. Like for you to have like... <laughs> I would expect better. I just would. Like, similar to if there was ever a Real Housewives of Chicago, which I know they never will do that because Andy Cohen just has this, I don't know, it's a thing, a whole thing. Um, he's been asked about it multiple times. He said he'll never do it. Um, but, like, he, I feel like if Chicago wasn't bringing it, I would feel away. If Beverly Hills wasn't bringing it, I would feel away. So, like, for you to have, like, a, a major city as part of your thing and you're still not bringing it it's i don't understand um anyway let's not make this around let me get this review over with i hate that i'm sounding that way but um uh, because i don't like coming on here being negative but it just was kind of boring so i will recap the episode but i promise you this is not gonna be that long of a review Okay, so the episode starts where they're still all on their way to um, Aaron's house in the Hamptons. 
Um, it's a short scene where you see Bryn spill some champagne on herself and she makes this like joke or whatever. I don't, who cares? And then <laughs> you see Uba and Sai's banter in the car. Apparently, <laughs> Uba has the degrees on her side at a thousand degrees, where I'll, and but it's so hot that it's not, it apparently, it's bothering Sai or whatever, and they're kind of complaining and bantering. But then they do actually talk about, um, you know, what's going on with Uba. And but I guess the other thing that was a focus of this episode is the fact that Uba's still not opening up. Like, we don't know what's going on with Uba other than the fact she is a man. And for you to be on this on this on a reality TV show, you gotta be able to open up. And it does come ahead to why. And it's I mean, we kinda already knew that, but it definitely comes ahead later on why she's not opening up. But she is opening up to certain people, just not everyone. Like, um, Sai is someone she's opening up to, even though Sai did what she did last season. But I guess since Sai apologized, she forgave her, and, you know, they're good. Um, and basically, fast forward, the ladies arrive, um, that, that were in the helicopter arrived first at Erin. So that's Bryn, Jessel, and Becky. Um, Becky Minkoff. Um, Aaron basically states that she's worrying about the ladies complaining again because last year that trip was not fun. And I guess that's the other issue that I have with this episode is this is another cast trip where they're not having any fun. They don't seem like they're ever having fun. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a problem. They don't seem like they're ever having fun, really. Um, which is weird. But anyway, so then... Um, Erin this time though, she made sure she had, pl she had plenty of food. She did, she did say in, a, in the confessional that she has some caviar, but she's just not going to bring it out this time because I, I guess some of the ladies had a hard time with her having caviar or whatever. So that was a thing. And then a rumor started. So then this is where things start to happen where Erin asked Sai and, um, Uba, why didn't Raquel ride with them? And, you know, they're like, I don't know. We were texting her. And then Aaron was like, yeah, she said that because she gets car sick, you wouldn't let her um, ride in the front seat. So she just decided she was just going to drive by herself. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be an argument now. Of who gets the seat of the car for a two hour trip. This is, if, if that tells you anything, that's how these things are starting. So, Sai is annoyed immediately because she's like, I literally just got here and now we're gonna, now Raquel, the new girl, has a problem with me. That's kind of how she feels about it because this is what Erin told her. And, I think, you know what? They're overproducing. I think that's the problem. They're overproducing drama, but the drama is not real drama. It's really stupid. It's not even like petty funny. It's just dumb. That's what it is. But anyway, so as this is happening, as you know, you can tell Sai's getting annoyed. Uba shut it down immediately. He's like, no, 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 we're not going to do this telephone thing. We're not going to do this telephone thing. We're not going to do it. And so Sai walks away and Sai's annoyed. And then um, the question does come up about the room situation. And Raquel and Jenna are sharing a room because they're the closest. So it makes sense. But then Bryn makes his joke like, oh. And I think that's the other reason why I'm kind of over it. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, um, but I'm getting really, 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 really irritated about how Bren always flirts with Jenna. It's really annoying. And I, I'm wondering if I'm the only one that feels that way. And maybe I'm projecting a little bit, but like, I guess for me, I don't like it when straight women... Or women that, because I'm not, I don't identify as straight. For those who haven't, who haven't figured that out, I identify as queer. So I'm, I'm pan. 
like I I like what I like. That's what it is for me. But I predict in the past for the most part I've usually I usually date men. But I do like women, um, biologically or not, doesn't matter to me. Love is love. That's how I feel about it. But um anyway, so I personally am someone I cannot stand being constantly flirted on. Um, like in general. Especially if we're not going to get to it. <laughs> like, do not do all that and we're not going to get to it. I don't like it. I don't think it's cute. I think it's kind of annoying. And also, too, because it's Bren and what I've been seeing of her the past, you know, last season and then the first couple episodes, it, it comes off as an act and it's really annoying. But anyway, apparently... Uh, clearly Jenna doesn't mind it, but it's just, it's, it's, it gives me the ick. That's, there we go. That's what I'm trying to go with. But anyway, so then immediately, um, so Raquel shows up. Um, so Jenna arrives and she arrives in style with her new Bentley. And then Raquel arrives and then Cy asks Raquel immediately about what was that? What was said here? And it was clearly miscommunication and it was resolved immediately. Like kind of been, but. And this is the other thing that kind of got on my nerves later on this episode. Um, this got brought up again and didn't need to be. But anyway. So then um, Uba then gets, um, talks to Bren. And um, she's like, you and Sai need to just talk it out and resolve whatever you got going on. And because Sai does want to be friends with um, Bren again. And honestly, up until this scene, we didn't know if Bryn wanted to be friends with Sai because based off of how sai has been acting outside of this, um, it really hasn't come off that way. So anyway, um, so basically they do get her to talk, get them two to talk and um, Uba like moves everyone else out of there. She's like, no, no, let them two talk, let them handle it. And um, Bren immediately just apologized. She's like, for anything and everything that I did, I'm just going to be, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's it. Can we move on? And Sai is actually taken aback and quite hurt and bothered by this because it's a fake apology. How are you going to apologize for something you don't know what you're apologizing for? And also, too, Sai hasn't said anything because, as we know, Bryn has been giving Sai the silent treatment since, like, the reunion. So they haven't talked not one time. Even though Sai, this whole entire time, has been trying to talk to Bryn to resolve their issues. And it's not just... And this is what got me. So, of course, this did not go well. Because Bryn does not know how to take any accountability whatsoever. And she made it about the one thing. She basically gaslit and just made the whole entire argument an issue that um, Sai had about the Jenna situation. And it wasn't just about the Jenna situation. It's been overall how Bryn's been acting, which is like a total bitch. Um, and so Bryn never did hear Sai out not one time about how hurt Bryn, I mean, how hurt Sai was. And what's messed up is Sai, I can I feel like Sai actually is trying to change, like actually, because for what we keep forgetting that Sai last season, she wasn't tolerable. She was annoying, but like she literally just dealt with her mom. Her, her mom just passed away, like right before the show started. So she was in major grieving mode and she was literally lashing out at anyone and everyone, like any, anyone and everyone could get it. And Sai now is going to therapy and you really can see a difference. Like Sai is appearing to be doing, you know, just the last couple episodes seems like she really is trying to change behavior. But Bryn, I'm just not, I'm not feeling how she's acting. But anyway, so they're not getting anywhere. Um, it gets escalated because Somehow it, it goes into the whole thing, what Jenna said that, because it goes back to the Jenna, um, Sai saying Jenna hates her or something like that, or, you know, the other way around, you know what I mean, because um, I'm so sick of this. <laughs> and so immediately Bren's like, 
Jenna, come here. Because, you know, she flirts with her. It's just annoying. And so Jenna, like a puppy, goes right over there and, like, and like, like, and backpedals immediately, by the way. Immediately backpedals. And size like, you literally said that she's the one who said this, that I said those words. And now you're saying, no, she was the only one. No, I'm not even sure if she's the one who said it. Like, she did all that. Like, she was backpedaling. And um, Aaron ends up showing up to try to de-escalate it. And then Sai just walks away. She's like, I'm not doing this with you. I'm done. But then after that, then we see that uh, Aaron, Jenna, and Bryn talk. And you know, Jenna, I'm so disappointed about how Jenna's been acting so far this season. I'm sorry, but what is Bryn doing for you to, for her to be, have this kind of hold over you where you're like her yes woman? I don't get it. It's weird. Um, but anyway, so they're talking about it and about how frustrated they are. Aaron's just like, oh my God, I just don't even know what to do here. And so they end up talking, the three of them. And then Bryn then does go to Sai and gives her a hug. So from Brins, Brins and she thinks are good. And Sai, she just was just, she's just like, I'm just going to be done with it. Because I think Sai meant what she said when she's like, I'm done with it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I'm not getting anywhere. I think that's literally what it was. Because we do find out later on the episode, that is exactly how Sai felt. But she just didn't feel the need to just keep going back and forth with her. Because Sai is really trying not to like do what she would normally do and explode. So she's just like, it's not even worth it. And honestly, I agree with you, Sai. It's not. It isn't. So there's that. Okay, so then the girls get settled in after that. Then Jenna gives all the girls lingerie. Um, and, and then for Jessel, Jessel, she doesn't give her lingerie right away. She first gives her this bag that has two different names on it, two different designer names, because this is a callback from last season where... Um, I guess Jess will like to mix um, designers, like where multiple designers just kind of like looking. Basically, according to Jenna, she felt like Jess will look tacky because <laughs> she was wearing multiple designers. And then after that, that in the bag was a costume of a Christmas tree because um, Jess the last season when she got the lingerie was complaining how she looked like a Christmas tree. But then she actually did get her some lingerie. And that lingerie was looking good. Um, and this is, okay, this is maybe an idea that I could think of they could do. Why don't they do a mini fashion show of the lingerie or something afterwards? I mean, and not in like a sexual or anything like that. But like, do so. I guess, I just feel like they, there's things they could do to make it fun. But instead of, so they got the lingerie and then they go out to dinner. It's like, I think the other thing is they're not even doing any activities. They just come to the Hamptons and then eat and argue. That's it. It's, it's boring. <laughs> it's really boring. Anyway. So. They go out to dinner. Um, all the ladies are looking good. Jess is basically naked. I mean, she actually is basically naked. Um, and um, we learn more about Raquel. And her, how she got into the art world. Um, we found out she was a she was a model in the '90s, and like so, we see old pictures of her from when she was modeling, and then how she transitioned to being kind of like an art dealer type thing, where she was like you know curating art, and then she explains how um, it was very tough for her to do that. It was a huge uphill battle because. Um, like, actual art world, they're not really very kind to women. And then also because she's also a black woman, it was an extra layer. Um, and she's still fighting it to this day, even though she's very successful. And she found her own lane within it. So that that was kind of cool to learn about that. But then, side note, this whole entire time, when we're getting to know this, Bryn is also flirting with her, too. Because, again, because she's a lesbian, she's flirting with her. And I just, I don't know, I just find that, like, very, I guess what, what it is, is very stereotypically kind of, like, gross. I don't like that. Like, 
What is that? Anyway, and I know Jessel, not Jessel, but I know Bren claims she flirts with everyone, but I just, maybe because I just really don't like Bren. <laughs> that might be also the issue. But anyway, so then from there, um, Aaron asks, how does she meet Raquel? And she kind of goes into that. And then um, we do learn about how um, Raquel um, got engaged. We actually saw the video of Mel proposing to her and um then they sh then she shows off the ring and the ring you know is very artsy very out there and then um yeah her story's interesting but i just raquel like her personality is just kind of like i don't know it's kind of boring i guess that's just kind of what i'm getting at with that but then um um uh, bren's like okay now that we learned about you now it's now it's your turn, Becky. Tell us about yourself. And the two minutes of um, Becky talking about herself was literally the highlight of the episode. Because it was comical. Because this lady's crazy. <laughs> I think she's crazy. Like, her, her story is kind of wild. And she's not doing herself any favors because, you know, her, her already being a Scientologist and, like, the way Scientology is not really getting a good rap these days, especially with, um, you know, the um, Danny Masterson of it all. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so basically she states, yeah, um, I moved here to New York. She, so she's originally from California. She ended up moving here to New York um, with a guy. Didn't really like the guy. She doesn't need a place to stay. So she was basically being um, a hobo, a hobo sexual. And for those who don't know what that is, it means you're basically doing what you need to do to have a place to stay. Um, yeah. Um, Urban Dictionary. Just look at that. <laughs> anyway, so. And then she tells this wild story about how she was with this man, thought she was going to like be able to stay and then the day before it was supposed to happen, he kicks her out because they break up. And then she invited also one of her friends from high school who she also lost her virginity to, to move to New York too. And he's the one who ended up taking the room. And it, that all was confusing. I didn't understand that. But then somehow they get, got to the subject about how, oh, that same guy she lost her virginity to is because she made an agreement with her parents. If she didn't do drugs, she could have sex at 16. And she thought that was extremely normal. And everyone was looking at her like, no, girl, that's not normal. <laughs> like, all of them, including me, was like, wait, what? I rewind that scene multiple times because I'm like, oh, this explains a lot. Um, so, yeah. But with that being said, I don't understand why she's friend up. She needs to be full time. That story was wild enough and crazy enough to me where I was entertained that two minutes she was talking and then the rest of this episode, I was bored. Anyway, so then the ladies end up going back home after that and we see that um, Uba, Aaron, and Jessel are talking and Uba's just talking about how she's just having issues opening up to the ladies because she doesn't trust Bren, basically. Um, but because Uba's not the best at articulating herself when she's upset, it's not translating that way at all. But that's what it is. Um, and she basically starts calling all a lot of the women pigeons. Because they just, you know, like a carrying pigeon. Um, basically the game of telephone. And that has been the issue with, this, with the ladies in general when it comes to this show. But the thing is, the game of telephone is over really, really stupid, like high school related type stuff. It's really dumb. And these are like grown women. And so they're talking and talking. And then um, Bryn does end up joining the conversation. And it goes left immediately. Um, Bryn is being condescending per usual. And Uba just feels extremely disrespected. And just starts going off on Bryn. And she also does share. And this is where Uba gets. This is Uba. And this is where. I feel like I have an issue with Uba. She takes on other people's problems when she's arguing. 
but she's not saying the issues that she has too because it's not like she doesn't have her issues with Bryn already. She could just leave with her own issues with Bryn that has nothing to do with anyone else because she you, she clearly still has them because we know Uba and her never did resolve the issues with of uh, Bryn basically putting her relationship out on blast before she was ready for that. That was never resolved and they could leave with that but they never like she doesn't but instead she's talking about how um she's talking about how like she feels a way that um Sai wasn't able to say how she felt she wasn't able to be truthful and Bren's annoyed because she's like look I've known Sai longer than I've known most of y'all here so don't don't do that um so Bren's getting defensive because of that um, because in Bren's mind, they're good, but that's because Bren just has emotional maturity of a child. So there's that. Um, and, but then from there, they're just yelling and then they're doing this. Blah, blah. I don't know what it was, but I just, I almost wanted to turn off the TV. But then after that, fast forward next morning, um, we do, we then see Uba's still pissed. Uba is red. Uba's Uba hot. That's what's happening. Uba is Uba hot. Um, so she is going to probably explode again if anyone gives her a reason to. Of course, Bren's going to give it to her. And so um, Uba then mentions the whole thing about the Raquel um, and front seat thing, which did not need to be mentioned. And it didn't make sense. And it kind of came out of nowhere. And it's just like, oh my God, who cares? And then, um, base, and that's another side issue. And then Bren's like, are you done being her representative? Which, I'm sorry, but like, we gotta call a thing a thing, Uba. You can't just keep doing that. And so immediately, they're going off on each other. And everyone's just kind of looking on like, oh my gosh. And then Jessel basically in confessional translates for the rest of us. Because honestly, up until she translated, I forgot why they're arguing. I didn't understand why they're arguing either. And it's because of what I said. There's, there, yeah, these are other issues. But the real issue is that Uba is still mad at Bren for what she did at the end of the season. And they never did talk it over. This is residuals of that. And this is what was coming out as. And as a result, um, Uba does not trust Bren and therefore is have, having trouble op opening up with the rest of the group because Bren is in it. And that's what it is. But anyway, so... Um, so then Sai shows up and they're still arguing and Uba's getting more and more escalated and then Sai just says pineapple and then Uba stops. And then they're like, what is that? Is that your safe word? And she's like, no, it's not my safe word. I only have a safe word when I'm sex. <laughs> and then after that, then like they went off to something else. It just kind of didn't make any sense. And then from there, sorry, I have something in my eye. And then from there, then um, it gets cold. And so everyone leaves. But then Aaron's like, hey, Uba, let me let me talk to you. So they stay outside and they go talk. And that's how the episode ends. Yeah, it. It was very confusing, very exhausting. And honestly, we said this last season, you need to start having fun on these trips and the arguments need to actually make sense. And they, and like, I'm bored. I'm so bored and I, I'm bored and I'm exhausted. Anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. Again, I am sorry that I did not love this episode, but like, it is what it is. Um, again, I'm going to give it two more tries. Uh, and, then, and also, honestly, I reviewed the episode so you don't have to review it. So you don't have to, like, I reviewed it so that you do not have to. Anyway, um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything, out of, the channel, if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, a.k.a. the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.